Uh, onze volgende gast die heeft zich het vuur uit de sloffen gelopen de afgelopen weken, maanden voor president Donald Trump. Voor zijn verkiezingscampagne, want zij voert campagne voor hem. En uh, dat heeft ze de afgelopen dagen ook nog gedaan in Philadelphia. Bijvoorbeeld waar ze hoopt dat de president toch nog een kans gaat krijgen. Diane Atkins. Diane, welcome to our show. Um, you are a Republican. You listened to the speech of uh, Joe Biden with us. You heard David Korn. Yes. What do you make, first of all, of the speech of Joe Biden? Well, I take it as, and excuse my voice, I have a little bit of allergies, so forgive me. Okay. You know, I take uh, Joe Biden's speech as what I expected him to do, which was to try to paint himself as this great unifier of the American people, and that there was so much volatility for the last four years politically, and he was going to join us together and be this great uniter. Um, however, based on his 47 years in Congress, um, in public office, and as the vice president, um, I don't see him as the great uniter. I see him as someone who went hand in hand with the greatest divider I feel we ever had, which was Barack Obama as the former administration. And um, I was left very unimpressed by Joe Biden's speech. Let's tick some boxes. First of all, sure. um, will you accept the fact that he is now the president-elect and that he will be the next president of the United States? At the moment, absolutely not. I feel that there is a court system here in America. There is a, a legal process for a candidate to go through if they feel that there has been any irregularities or improprieties in the voting process. Um, I am one of those people who feel very strongly that there was tampering in our election. I think if you look, uh, I know your prior guest said, oh, stay off of Twitter and Facebook. Um, if you look at various viral videos that have been shared on social media, there is absolute proof there are people that are coming forward who work where, where for the United the, States Post Office. Where is the proof? Because we, the, the, as David Cohen said, the president has said that there was fraud, but he hasn't given every, any evidence, and we haven't seen anything yet. Right. Well, actual evidence belongs in the courtroom. So the actual evidence will be presented by Donald Trump, President Trump's lawyers like Giuliani, Ru Rudy Giuliani. But right now, there are a, a, a huge amount of viral videos of people that are coming forward as witnesses. Mayor Giuliani, former Mayor Giuliani, was out there today in Philadelphia. He had several people representing over 50 people that have said to them that they are Republicans, they were poll watchers or they were mm -hmm. observers. They were kept out. There's videos that are a viral of a gentleman who was a poll watcher who was how, refused entry. How and come there we, are we haven't seen anything yet on uh, maybe you say mainstream media, but even Fox News, which is always has always been friendly to the president. Yes and, and no. And the New York Post always being friendly. Uh, outlets of Rupert Murdoch, who is a friend of the president. How come they haven't published anything about voter fraud? That I have no idea. I am not, you know, a part of those publications or those networks. I have no idea what is going on with that. Mm -hmm. All I can say is that there are irregularities that have been reported. People, there are witnesses who are saying that they were kept out as observers. They were refused entry. There is a legal right to have observation of ballots. If you cannot see what I'm opening up and who, if there's a signature, then that is not truly okay. being observed. Let's not debate it, but the fact is, till now, we haven't seen any proof. And you say, well, it is there, but it hasn't been presented yet. Well, they haven't gone to court yet. Right. That's coming Monday. Okay. And, and you're absolutely convinced that uh, this will be affected. Are, are you convinced, for example, just to check, that uh, president-elect Joe Biden will not be the president on the 20th of January. I am 100% certain of that. He will I am 100% certain that President Donald J. Trump won this election fair and square, and that by the time this goes through the court process, the legal proceedings, mm -hmm. I am 100% confident that Donald J. Trump will be re-elected for four more years as the president of the United States. Right. We asked you uh, to sit at a table yes. with a Democrat or a journalist which opinion is different than yours. Correct. For example, David Korn, who yes. just left the table. And you said, absolutely not. Yes. Why? Because I've been in those situations before. I've been in that situation where I've been uh, sometimes in audience panel discussions with multiple people on the left, multiple people on the right. Mm -hmm. I am one of those people who... I've done many Trump rallies, I've done rallies in the city, I've done rallies in DC. This is something I'm passionate about. 
And I am at the point where I am tired of having to have arguments with people. You know, let the process go. When Al Gore in 2000 wanted to challenge, he was afforded the legal opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. If everything goes through the legal process and it is shown that Joe Biden would be the president, well, then that's what everyone would accept, like they did in 2016. But what the Dutch audience will see now from yes. the show is one journalist who says, A, and a Republican Trump supporter who says B. Right. Can these two planets <laughs> ever come together? Can you ever come to an agreement or is this country so divided that you will never listen to each other and never do what the other party wants? In my heart, I would like to believe that this country can come together. But? But my feeling is that there's been so much division mm -hmm. that it's going to take a lot to do that. Could there, there be, I don't want it to happen, but could there be violence on the street if this process leads to uh, a transition towards president-elect Joe Biden? But there already has been violence on I the know. streets. That's why I'm asking. And it's asking. all from the left. You know, uh, that's one of the things that well, I that's, find... Well, Diane, that's not true. We have also seen uh, people from right-wing organizations Who? with Who? AK, Proud Boys, uh, Proud Wolverines. Boys? Well, let me ask you a question. You have Antifa, you have Black Lives Matter. Have you ever been outside in the streets of New York City and had somebody knock your hat off your head? Have you had people threaten you? I have. Mm -hmm. I've had men, full grown men, buck up against me and, and call me all types of names. Because they because saw that I, you were a Trump because supporter? Because I was a Trump supporter. Right. And I was visibly wearing something that can said we, Can we agree on the fact that from both sides there has been violence? No. No, because if you want to take the, the violence that some might say some right-wing uh, groups have done, it is hmm. totally disproportionate to what the left has done. You do not see Trump supporters burning cop cars, breaking in windows, looting millions of dollars worth of property, beating people in the streets, shooting people dead, like, like a security guard for, for a journalist did. So I would like to know... A well, right wing, where is... A right-wing uh, guy in a car drove into a demonstration at a university, as you know. And, and, and President killed, Trump... And, and President person. Trump... President Trump denounced that. But the media lied and said that he said, oh, they were fine, they were fine people right. talking about uh, KKK, when he did not say that, and that has been debunked. You know, when there's violence on the right, Everyone wants to say, hey, you know, the right is terrible. They're doing all of this. Yeah. But where is the left to denounce that? Where are the left wing, the, the, the radical left that we have in this country now? The Democratic Party has been taken over by radicals. They are anti-American, and they're not even Democrats. These people are basically looking to instill socialism and communism, and America will never be a socialist country. You, um, before the show started, yes. there was a... Um short confrontation between you and our previous guest, David Korn. Was it a confrontation? It was a debate or a confrontation, whatever you want to call it. A little heated exchange. A I'm heated exchange. Yes. And, and you said to him, enjoy your short-lived victory. Correct. Meaning? Meaning, I do not believe that Joe Biden will remain the president of the United States. I believe after the legal proceedings that President Donald J. Trump will then be found to be re-elected for four more years. If he gives up, the next coming days, and he decides, okay, this is it for me. I'm he not going to fight this. He won't. How do, how do you know? Because my president has said he will not. He will fight this till the end, and I stand with him 100% on that. Okay. I stand with President Trump 100%. Right. Um, we'll talk more, but first, okay. um, earlier, before this show, I talked to the former White House communications director of the President uh, Trump, Anthony Scaramucci. Mm. He was in office for 11 days in Correct. this role. And then he insulted the chief of staff in an interview uh, of President Trump, and President Trump fired him. I asked him earlier uh, what he makes of the president-elect Joe Biden. Let's have a look. Sure. First of all, what are your thoughts on the election, on the victory of Joe Biden today? Well, listen, I, I, for me, it, is a, uh, it was a lot of work explaining what I thought was going on in the society and what I thought the damage would have been from a President Trump additional term. So I am thrilled that this has happened. I think it's great for America. I think it's great for the world. And I think long term, it'll also be great for the Republican Party, uh, which is a party that I'm still a part of uh, that I feel Mr. Trump had hijacked and sort of 
turned it into a personality cult, uh, which was demagogic and very dangerous. Are you still a member of the party or did you vote for Joe Biden? Well, I'm still a member of the party, but I, I, I voted for Joe Biden, but I voted for Republicans down ticket and I voted, uh, I voted my conscience, which I recommended to most Americans to do. He was the best choice for the Republican Party, Joe Biden. Mr. Trump is not a Republican in the classic sense of Republican Party politics. Right. Let's go back to the time when you worked with the president in the White House as communications director. We all know you worked there for 11 days and then you were fired by the, by the president. Uh, have you ever talked to him yeah. after that period of time? Oh, yeah, no, certainly. Yeah, I listen, I, I was fired by General Kelly. Uh, the president uh, doesn't like personal confrontation with people. Uh, so John Kelly, his first act as White House Chief of Staff was to fire me. And as I've always said, I did something fireable. So I had, was not offended by being fired. And I had nobody to blame other than myself. And so uh, I tried to stay loyal to the president's agenda. Um, I talked to the president a few days after my firing. And, and I, I thought it was important, despite the fact that I was fired. Uh, and I think you met me, frankly, uh, and I was still supporting and trying to defend the president for almost two years after my departure. But it became impossible to defend the combination of his personality and his policies, and a result of which at his peak poll numbers back in August of 2019, I said, I'm sorry, I can't support this sort of behavior anymore or what he's doing to the United States. And so therefore, I'm... Uh, renouncing my support. And people looked at me like I was crazy because he was at the highest polling numbers and the economy was doing well. Uh, but I said to people back then that he was going to lose the election primarily because there was something wrong with him. And there was this self-destructive streak in his personality. And it, it, it more or less played out the way I thought. And, and here we are now. So what do you think he will do? Because if you follow his Twitter feed, he is not willing to say congratulations to Joe Biden and, and apparently leave the White House. So from you, you know him very well. What do you think he will do? Well, there's a obscure procedural thing that he may try. Some of the arch conservative pundits are recommending that he push the state legislatures in certain Republican states to remove the electors uh, and it's an arcane law, but the electors have always been given to the popular vote. Uh, in some of those constitutions, those state constitutions, the state legislatures may be able to take those electors away from the popular vote and give them to who's ever controlling the state legislature. And so that's something that would have to be challenged by the U.S. Supreme Court. And Mr. P the President, President Trump has three people that he put on that court. And I think he's confident that he may be able to flip the election by doing that. I don't think he's going to be capable of doing that. I don't even think Mitch McConnell is going to allow him to do that. But we'll have to see. I mean, that's the craziness of uh, President Trump. And that is the clearest example, the way he's handled himself over the last 72 hours is the clearest example and the largest amount of evidence, frankly, as to why he should no longer be president and why he should have never been president in the first place. He has no class or no level of decorum. He has said repeatedly that he wouldn't necessarily accept a peaceful transfer of power in the oldest standing Republican democracy. Uh, and I find that to be ridiculously offensive. It's ridiculously offensive to America and therefore, there was a higher order of patriotism to speak out against it, as opposed to clinging to partisanship or some of that political nonsense. Do you think he's willing to fire up his base and tell them, go out on the street, do whatever it takes to get me in the White House or to get four more years in the White House? I don't know. I, I, I hope not. You know, is it possible? Yes. I, but I sincerely hope not. Do you think he still has the support of the Republican Party? Well, I think they're afraid of him. I think he got 70-ish million votes. And I think that they're, in my opinion, misinterpreting those votes. Uh, you know, there's a signal and a noise to those votes. The signal that Mr. Trump and his family want people to hear is that those people were voting for him. But I actually think that's the noise. I think the signal is about those people voting for themselves and those people voting for the fact that they feel disaffected from the American 
system and they feel angry about that, a result of which they want to send a message. It's almost like a customer complaint. Uh, this system's not working for me. My wages are down. Uh, I haven't been able to get a, a new job. I need jobs training. I need help with my children and my family. And the establishment parties for the last three decades have not really provided that. And at least in Mr. Trump's case, he's been an avatar for their anger. He's sort of been their anger representative in Washington. So uh, if we can cure their ills, if we can calm them down and we can provide them with good policy solutions, I think Trumpism and the specter of nationalism and all of the negativity that goes with that level of populism will die off in the United States. And I think the, the vice president has the opportunity to be that transformative post-partisan leader. And I pray that, uh, that he'll take the advice and counsel of people and try to run the government in a centrist manner. Yeah. Last question, Mr. Scaramucci. Do you think that there's the 70 million people that voted for Trump and who feel disenfranchised, and some of them are very angry, that Joe Biden can bring them in the fold and do something for them? I do think so. I do think so. And I, and I, and I will say this, that uh, my dad grew up about 15 miles from the vice president, or now the president-elect, uh, in, in northeastern Pennsylvania, which is predominantly a coal mining town and a lower middle class area of our country. And I think he has the pathos. I think he has the empathy and the understanding of what those people are going through. And I think he's going to be extremely focused on trying to offer them a policy solution. And if you study history, European history, American history, the dissipation of populism comes when there's aspirational hope and aspirational opportunity. And I think it's important for all of us as Americans to work on that with him. And this is a great day for the world because... Uh, this would have been a nightmare for the world. Uh, President Trump would have hurt our Western European alliances. He would have uh, continued to politicize the science around the pandemic. And he would have been a, a great danger. Uh, you know, hundreds, of, tens of thousands, if not a hundred thousand or so, more people would have died uh, had he been reelected. And so I'm very happy today. Anthony Scaramucci, thank you so much for your time tonight. Hey, good to be here. Thank you. Diane, you listened in, Diane Atkins, a uh, Republican, a uh, Trump supporter. You campaigned like crazy the last couple yes. of months. What do you make of Anthony Scaramucci's words? Not much. I take him to be a disgruntled employee and very disingenuous. For a man to sit there and say that after losing his job, turned around and teased on a live TV on Fox and Friends, I believe it was, um, saying, maybe I'll get my job back. And the president said, no, you won't, you know, stay where you are. You're better doing what you're doing. I think what Scaramucci said was absolutely horrendous. Um, he's saying this will put an end, if there's a Biden presidency, an end to partisanship. Really, why was Joe Biden calling people like me chumps just a few days ago? So I don't buy into anything that Scaramucci says. Um, I think that he's had his 15 minutes of fame and he's worn it out. Yes. And, and, excuse me, I do think one of the things he's saying derogatory about the president, his crazy rhetoric, this and that. Under President Trump, we've had the best economy this country has seen ever, the highest amount of employment among blacks, Hispanics, Asians, women. We have had a pandemic that was brought upon us, and while... Um, Democrat politicians were out in the streets in the Chinatowns around the, the country, like... My Mayor de Blasio in New York City mm -hmm. and Pelosi, Nancy Pelosi, they, yeah, the, the, out in California. The, the saying, president come, didn't protect himself. No, no, no. They were no saying, masks, they, no, excuse me, they were saying, know, come and celebrate Lunar New House. Year. While meanwhile, the president was saying, you know what? We need to stop flights from China because people will die. And they were calling him a xenophobe and calling him a racist. And yet many of the experts, including Fauci, they said if, the, if President Trump did not ban those flights from China, we would have at least 2 million to 3 million people dead in America. I think the president should hire you as, as a lawyer. Maybe he should. <laughs> okay. Diane, thank you so much for being here. Uh, thank but you. whatever it takes, you say, this president will stay. He's not going to leave the White House. You're convinced of that. I believe it 100%. And he will fight Joe Biden till... Tooth and nail to the bitter end. And you will help him with it. Well, I'm not an attorney, but I'm a supporter, and I'm, I'm here for anything that the president needs. 
hit me up. <laughs> thank you and God bless you. Oké, okay, Diane, thank, thank you so much for being well. here. Take thank care. you. Uh, dan is natuurlijk uh, de vraag.